what are some of your, you know, what are some of the books that you've read that you're like, you, you don't miss these books? Yeah, there's two I've read recently. Well, a couple, um, I'll, I'll do three. Um, I loved uh, Masters of Scale hmm. uh, by uh, the, um, gosh, his name just escaped me, the Netflix founder. And it's all about how you how you scale your brand, right? And then Phil Knight, Shoe Dog, the, wow. the Nike story, uh, immensely helpful. Uh, he, he gets very philosophical philosophical in it. And I like that aspect of it. Then I just finished reading Tony Shea's book, Buying Happiness. So he was one of the founders of Zappos and really sad how his life was cut short. Uh, so life kind of ended sadly, but the, the story of how he was laser focused on culture is really amazing. So if you're interested at all in culture, uh, T- Tony Shea's book's amazing, how they hire for culture. Okay, Reed Hoffman, it came to me, That's Masters nice. of Scale, Reed Hoffman. Anyone looking to grow from the startup to the scale up, read Reed Hoffman. And it's not just Netflix, like the guy's phenomenally successful in investing in companies, just a, a, an incredible leader. Follow him on LinkedIn and follow his story, but that book's incredible. Those are three fabulous books. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I loved about Tony Shea's story is, um, correct me if I'm wrong on this, and I, 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 if I'm mixing my stories, but he would offer new hires after they'd been there. Yeah. I know what you're going to say. Would you mind sharing that story? Yeah. So they did, they do a training. I think it's like, it was like a six week training and sort of d- fully immerse them into what is it like to be part of the Zappos culture? And then they offer them $2,000 to leave. That's awesome. And he said 99% of the hires turn it down, right? Yeah. But it's just saying like, are you really in or not? Are you in or not? So right. make that decision. And, and oh, that's brilliant. one way to cement culture in your organization is getting people that buy the vision, want to be part of the vision and want to be there. Exactly. Um, they do a lot of listening. He talks about how they come up with, with their, uh, their core values and same thing. Like he started out with this long list, but then he got input from the team and it wasn't just his core values. It was the company's core values. And he also says, don't just look at what other companies have as their values and think that that's going to be yours because everyone's going to have their own core values. Agreed. It's, it, it's a and, wonderful book. Yep. And, and as you're building them, I will throw to you the ones that other people have maybe aspirational values and those not to be disregarded because there might, but sometimes those values are just, you know, table stakes. But what yeah. you're talking about is my favorite thing is, um, are they alive and well in your organization today. So if I couldn't speak or hear, all I had was my sight and I was walking around your organization, am I going to be able to see your values lived by the people that work with you? Yeah, that's great. I love so, that. Oh my gosh. I love our time today. If you're talking and sitting down at a family business event tomorrow, and they just said, Stephanie, if you had one piece of advice for the leadership team here, what are you leaving them with? I have a sense of purpose. I think that's the most important thing. I met with Dan Cathy, who recently handed over the reins of Chick-fil-A to his son, Andrew. So that's a third generation founded by Truett Cathy, Dan's father. And I asked Dan, all sorts of questions. I just barraged, you know, barrage of questions I threw at him on financing and scaling. And he just stopped me and said, what is your sense of purpose? What's your calling? Why are you doing this? And it's, it's that whole Simon Sinek, what's your why, right? Understand why are you doing this? And so just hone in on that. And that's what makes a family business last you're not thinking just in terms of quarterly profit reports, you're thinking in terms of generation and it's generational value. And that generational value is built with a sense of purpose. 
I really appreciate that. And you're preaching to the choir. My core purpose for three years was wrong. Yeah. yeah. See, don't be afraid to walk away and say, I got to change it. And well, as soon as we changed it, everybody in the company said, oh, that is right. What we what we were saying our core purpose was is why you know, how we do it. That's what it was. Yeah. It's got to be the why. So thank you. Yeah. That was really, really important. I don't think enough CEOs, enough family businesses understand how important purpose is. It really, between purpose and values, they become that filter for what do I say yes to and what do I say no to as well? And who's on the team? And magnetically yes. attracts some and it magnetically detracts the people that aren't going to fit your culture. So powerful. I can't thank you enough for your time. I had a, I had a great time. Um, you are textbook, you know, the right story, doing the right things, building it around the right people. You've got a great team surrounding you. And I'm positive that when we have you back on the show before you retire, that uh, you will have hit your goals and, and made this all happen. Um, lot well, thank be, you, Michael. It's been my pleasure. You have a lot to be proud of, you and your team. So keep it up. We look forward to watching you on social media and seeing what you're doing out there. Um, Stephanie Stuckey from Stuckey's. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Michael Columbus. This is the Family Biz Show um, in Rochester, New York. And make sure you listen in to other great family business stories. There is no one single right way to do this. Family business is messy. We love it. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.